Welcome to the third episode of Zero to Hero. In the past episode we took a bunch of outmatched fights while roaming the mists and roads of Avalon. While so far we've been using the Warbow, in this episode we're switching to the Bow of Badon. We'll be taking more fights in the mists and discussing them and we're also trying to find the city of Brazilian. Stick around until the end if you want to see a full breakdown of the build. Our first fight is against a claw build. I run by him to bait him into dismounting me, and he does, so he starts his fight off without his E. This gives me a big advantage. As soon as I'm dismounted, I use my Raging Storm to damage him and my Frost Shot to disengage. His Hunter Hood is a bit late, so he doesn't manage to reflect all the damage of my E back to me. Since all his abilities are on cooldown, I keep my distance and poke him with Poison Arrow. As soon as he uses his mercenary jacket, I know he wants to turn on me, so I turn on my hunter hood and reflect most of the damage he does to me back to him. This negates both his engage and his mercenary jacket. I also missed my E, but again he's on cooldown so I can keep chasing him. I know that he will turn on me as soon as his cooldowns are back up, but I still have my assassin jacket up, and as soon as he uses his E on me, I can use my assassin jacket to completely negate his E. One final raging storm and poison arrow finishes him off. Next up we're fighting against these battle bracers. In this fight my hunter hood will be essential. Since most of his damage is loaded in the E spell, if I manage to hunter hood his E I will have a big advantage. That's exactly what happens and from now on he tries to disengage, because he knows he loses the fight since I completely reflected his initial engage. Since he has wanderlust and I have no purges, he manages to get away. However I successfully bullied him off of the weakened wisp so I can go and deposit him now. A few minutes later I managed to find him again. Notice how this time he doesn't start off the engage with his E. He correctly tries to bait out my hunter hood first, or tries to do it so quickly that I cannot reflect it. Luckily my hunter hood activates right before the damage hits. Since he is invisible now I use my healing potion and my healing sprint to try to regen some health. Again he tries to disengage, but this time he seems interested in continuing the fight, otherwise he could have just gotten away here. I try to time my damage to kill him through the undead cape, but unluckily this mob triggers it instead, so now I have to guess the direction he went in. Next up we're fighting against the bear paws build. I managed to bait out his initial engage by frost shotting towards him and then immediately turning back. My hunter hood is slightly late here and I do not manage to reflect all of the damage. However, since I'm fighting against the axes, I can reflect most of the bleed damage to him, which is still good enough.
Next up we're fighting against a quarter staff, and it is very similar to fighting a battle bracer. A lot of the damage is front loaded in the E and W spells. Luckily, he managed to completely miss them at the beginning of the fight, so I have a big advantage. However, here you can see just how effective the Hunter Hood can be against the Bow of Badon. He correctly reflected my entire E spell and he took away 40% of my life. I managed to get some of it back up with the Healing Potion and the Healing Sprint. If you managed to make it this far into the video, then you passed the average view duration. Thank you for supporting the channel and this Zero to Hero series. It's been a lot of fun making it. Leave a like and a subscribe if you're interested in more commentaries like this one. Now, back to the fight. This quarterstaff managed to completely disengage using his demon boots. However, these have a very long cooldown, so he won't be able to use them again. I reflect his entire engage using my hunter food, so this fight is pretty much won. Battle axes are a great weapon and have a lot of damage. If I let the battle axe stay close to me for a long while without any of my defensives up, that is, the hunter hood, then I completely lose this fight. I have to keep my distance as much as I can. However, I also have to engage towards him to start the fight. The initial engagement does look pretty bad for me, but all his abilities are now on cooldown, so I have to take advantage of this time to harass him as much as I can. If I don't sidestep his axes, I also lose the fight because I will take way too much damage. Taking a break from the 1v1s, we try to fight over this chest. There are about 6 people fighting here, so I try to do my best to stay alive. As soon as the spear user goes down, the curse turns on me, and afterwards the bow starts to chase me because he sees I'm low and he knows I have no cooldowns to escape. I do my best to stay alive. The only reason I managed to escape here is because I'm using cooldown reduction food while he has no food. If you look at his icon, you can see that he's using a fish, which does not give him any combat stats. If he had omelette up, he probably could have catched me and killed me. I managed to regen enough of my HP up, and now the hunter becomes the hunted. Before we had all these fights in the mists, we took some time to spec up the bow of the dawn. Here you can see a highlight of the open world mobs and the mists objectives we got throughout that time. We were also searching for the city of Brazilian.
At the end of all the fame farming and fighting, we managed to find an uncommon mist that had a portal to Brazilian, so we have finally reached the city in the mists. We transported all our loot back home, and we take a tally of all the loot we have gathered. We take the time to open Conqueror's chests that we have accumulated with all the favor throughout these three episodes. If we liquidated our entire bank, we'd probably have enough silver to buy a month of premium. Thank you everyone for the amazing support on this series, and let me know what would you like to see next. If anyone wants to see the build that was used throughout this video, here it is.